I'm making this video on the spread of COVID-19 in Australia and to show where Australia is headed if it does not commit to strong measures to prevent the further spread of this virus within our population. And this video is showing mathematically how quickly this virus can spread based on the existing data which is in the public domain. Now, I've been collecting data since the 25th of January. The data I'm using can be collected from this website, which is relying on the World, he World Health Organization and data from other sources. Uh, I also check this against the media. All right, so our data is, let's start with the 25th of January and call that day one. And the number of cases on that day by the end of that day was four. And then uh, two days later, some more tests revealed that uh, on day three, we'll call that, that there were five confirmed cases of COVID-19 in Australia. Two days later on the 29th of January, there were seven confirmed cases. And this last column here represents confirmed cases of COVID-19 in Australia. Not those who were tested, but confirmed cases, those who've been shown to have the virus. Um, the actual number tested is larger than this. So these are the actual confirmed cases of COVID-19 in Australia, beginning on the 25th of January and going through. Uh, a bit on the early days, there was not uh, there were not cases every day or there was not testing or um, there's a gap here between the tw uh, 27th and the 29th. Uh, there's another gap here between the 2nd of February and the 8th of February. Either no data was collected or there were no cases. But either way, we jumped from 12 cases on the 2nd of February to 15 cases on the 8th of February. Uh, and then there's another gap from the 12th. And then after the 13th, the 14th and 15th of February, there were no tests uh, and so on. Finally, this data goes all the way up until today when I'm making the video right now, the 22nd of March in the evening, and there were, as of this evening, 1,347 confirmed cases of COVID-19 in Australia. All right, if we were to plot this, and bear in mind this is our source again, I'm just reminding you, this is where you can collect daily uh, uh, cumulative tallies of um, COVID-19 in Australia. And if we plot this against the number of days since the 25th of January, we get a plot like this. And you can see that the number of cases is really taking off. It looks very exponential. And the goal of this video will be to find a mathematical model which describes this apparent exponential growth. All right, next bit. So uh, our model turns out using a uh, mathematics package you can uh, model the data. Um, there's numerous mathematics packages, statistics packages around. You can do this. But the model that uh, I've come up with is this one. And that is when plotted, when this uh, formula here, this equation here, when the expression on the right there is plotted, uh, T is the number of days since January the 25th, and P is the number of people with confirmed who are confirmed to have COVID-19. And when we plot this, that's the blue curve here, and the red dots represent the actual data that's been collected um, by the government in Australia. And that was the data you saw on the previous couple of slides. So the red dots represent the actual numbers of confirmed cases in Australia, and the blue line represents the mathematical model, which can be used reasonably well to describe how this uh, epidemic is growing. And the actual mathematical model is this one here. <clears throat> All right, so coming back to our data, number of cases, actual confirmed recorded cases, are this is this column here and this one over here. What's happening on the right here with all these decimals and all the rest, this is the numbers predicted by the mathematical model I showed you on the previous slide. In the early days, it's not very good. I mean, on, on day one, January 25, there were four cases, and this has got just about zero. Um, day three, you've got five cases, where this is still reading pretty well zero. In the early days, the growth, the pattern was not very exponential. If you have a look here on the 
uh, 8th of February, then the 12th of February, the 13th of February, 16th of February, 17th of February, 18th of February, 19th of February, a fair, fairly long stretch of time, there's still only 15 cases. Why is that? Lack of testing, people not aware they might have had the symptoms and not realised they were um, infected with COVID-19 because their symptoms were only quite mild, um, uh, a lack of understanding. Um, there could be any number of factors for the reason that you have a straight line here. So that doesn't, this straight line of 15 here doesn't really fit an exponential model. An exponential model would look like this. A model of exponential growth would look like this, slowly, slowly. Starts off very, very slowly. It's, it's, so it's not a good approximation. You see here on the 21st of February, you've got 21 actually confirmed, actual confirmed cases, whereas the model is still only predicting 2.46. Where this model becomes accurate is later on. As the numbers grow, they begin to approach a, a geometric or exponential sequence and they grow in an exponential manner. And you can see that when you get down to here, when you get down to about day 44 even, you've got 198 confirmed cases. According to the model, there's 201. Um, round that off to 201 people is you can't have 0.49 of a person so you round that off to 201 people that's how you treat the decimals in this day 45 which was the 14th of march you have 248 confirmed actual cases and the model is predicting 248 even back here day 40 on the 9th of march you have 92 confirmed cases the model predicts 87 so it's not too bad but the the more time goes on the more the actual mathematical model coincides with the actual numbers. You can see here day 47, the 16th of March, you have 378 cases where in fact there are actually 376 actually recorded. Um, 17th of March, 453, 466. 18th of March, 566, 575. 19th of March, 708 actual cases according to the model 709. 20th of March, just two days ago, you have 875 cases, actually confirmed cases, and 874, almost 875 according to the model. Yesterday, the 21st of March, there were 1,071 confirmed cases. Here, the model says 1,079. Um, and just over here for today, the 22nd of March, 1,347 confirmed cases, uh, and the model predicting 1,330. So the model is getting better as time goes on. Uh, no doubt the government's getting better as testing as well, um, and more accurate. And uh, testing is more accurate, and more people are showing up to be tested out of concern. Um, so that so it's no it's no surprise that the model, the mathematical model, is coinciding with the actual numbers. All right. So how does this model work? Well, here it is. Just to remind you again, what it is. Um, uh, let's just have a pick out two days in a row. Let's just pick the last two days, today and yesterday, day 52, day 53. Here's the actual numbers, 1,071, 1,347. Here's what's predicted by the model. And so how does this model work? Well, if you take this number here on day 52 and you multiply it by this factor here, this 1.23339, you'll produce this number here for day 53. So day 53, this number here, is... 1.23339 times this number here and that's what I'm trying to show here and that means that this number 1330.99225 I'll keep the decimals just for calculation purposes is 23.339 percent larger than this number here so in the space of from day 52 yesterday to today the number of cases has grown by 23.3 percent roughly that's what we're trying to that's what I'm trying to say here. So 23.339% of this number is that proportion there, that ratio there, times this number here, and gives us this. Now if we add this on to the original number we're working with, we get the second number. And that's how this model is working. Between two successive days, the latter day will always be 1.23339 times the day before and that's how this model is working all right and all of the above means that the rate of growth of this virus in australia is 23.3 percent per day according to the mathematical model which as we see 
is becoming very accurate and very closely approximating the actual numbers. So roughly in Australia, the COVID-19 <clears throat> infection rate is 23.3%. So we're getting a growth in numbers of 23.3% each day. So, the, so day two will be 23.3% larger than the day before. All right, so what does this model predict for the days immediately ahead of us? Okay, well, tomorrow, Monday, the 23rd of March, day 54, it's predicting this many cases. And if we continue on right down to the 1st of April here, we're going to have 10,843 cases. And if we continue on again at the 5th of April, we run into 25,094 cases. And if we continue on down to the 13th of April, we then have 134,395 cases. And each of these numbers is 23.3% larger than the number before it. All right, let's carry on. 14th of April, we have 165,762. And if we keep going down, keep going down, down to day 100, which is the 8th of May, we end up with 25,462,169 cases. Pretty the whole population of Australia, basically. Um, the virus spreads quickly. And each of these numbers is 23.3% larger than the one before it. All right, so this model predicts that we will have 10,843 confirmed cases by the 1st of April, which is only days away. Now, why is that significant? Well, in all of the public and private hospitals in both Australia and New Zealand, there are roughly 2,000 ICU beds. Now, about 20% of those infected with the virus require hospital treatment, with some or all of that 20% requiring an ICU bed. Now, 20% of 10,843 is 2,168 people. Now, that's a number that is already greater than the total number of available ICU beds. Now, <clears throat> So we can only afford to have in the whole of Australia and New Zealand 10,843 infections, and that'll still overwhelm the total number of ICU beds. And that's not even including car accidents and other demands which are placed on ICU beds. So already this figure here between Australia and New Zealand of 10,843 people is well in excess of, is starting to be get to become well in excess of what our hospitals can cope with. Now we, we might say, well, only 10% of those infected require an ICU bed then we reach our limit. So if we have only 10% of infected people reach our limit, well then when we reach a total uh, population of infected people of 20,346, then 10% of that will give us roughly 2,000 beds that we'll require. Now, I mean, that's, that's already a very large number of people and that occurs on the 4th of April. So the hospital system in this country and in New Zealand as well will be rapidly overrun. We just have a shortage of ICU beds and that's a critical factor in this whole virus issue. It's not the total number of people infected. The critical issue is that ICU bed limit because those infected with the virus, as we well know, if they are in that critical stage, they need an ICU bed with a ventilator to keep them alive. So clearly we're running out of time. We need to act soon. Um, so by the 8th of, this May, uh, 8th of May, this model predicts that almost 25.5 million Australians will be infected. I mean, that's just a phenomenal number. But you can see from the plot how rapidly this thing is just growing already. And this is up to today, the 22nd of March. We need to act and act soon. People must adhere to the social distancing measures and the governments must act, try and increase the number of uh, ICU beds and try and take all possible steps to slow down the spread. And that means closing all down, all non-essential activities um, and limiting the spread in all possible ways like we've seen in China and elsewhere. Otherwise, it'll just get beyond us and it'll be out of control. And it doesn't have to be out of control. It's just a matter of us acting and cooperating together, helping each other out by adhering to the social distancing rules, by adhering to hygiene rules, but also by the government shutting down non-essential activities. Do we need to have schools and universities and others running? That's the question, because clearly that's a source of spread for the virus. And that's